All right. So, uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Velma for today, as mentioned by uh, Olga, that we will have a training regarding the three D, regarding the three D analysis and also three uh, D data processing uh, in SuperMap IDEX top. All right. So, uh, for the other the overview, um, the, the overview for today's training, I will divide into four main parts. The first one is uh, data organizations. The second one is models in 3D scene. The third one is events in 3D scene. And the last one is 3D analysis. So before going uh, to the next slide, uh, if you want to translate it to Russian, please. Сегодня мы будем рассматривать 3D операции, как выполняются 3D операции. Мы будем рассматривать сегодня, как данные организуются здесь, как создать модели 3D в сцене, как рассматриваем эффекты 3D в сцене и анализом будем заниматься. Okay, thank you. So let's start uh, with the first one, which is the data organizations. Okay. All right. Um, this is the the data structure in SuperMap IDEX top. I think. Uh, it, you all already know about this data structure because uh, from the last two training, uh, yesterday and the day before yesterday, we already uh, talked a lot more about 2D data sets, right? 2D layers and also 2D analysis. And for today, we will talk more about uh, 3D data. Um, so in SuperMap I desktop uh, for the data structure in 3D data, we will open it as a scene. So it's not opening as a map, but opening it as a scene. And uh, under the scene, uh, we have a data, uh, we have a data next data structure, which is the screen layer, general layer, and also a terrain layers. This is the different, um, the layers is differentiated uh, based on a data that we open in SuperMap I desktop. Later, I will also uh, display it one by one, which one is the screen layers, which one is general layers, and which one is terrain layers. But for now, what you want, uh, what do you, uh, what you need to know that uh, 3D data will open in, will open in 3D, but not in a 3D scene, but not in a 2D map. Мы уже знаем, как работать с 3D данными. Вчера мы это рассматривали, когда мы рассматривали 2D данных такое же будет, но здесь мы будем единственное различие. Right. So this is a uh, 3D scene introductions. So the 3D scenes uh, use a virtualized technology to simulate various geographic features and also their spatial relationship uh, in the real world. And we have uh, several modes of a 3D scene, which is a plane scene and also a spherical scene. What is the difference between those modes of 3D scenes? A plane scenes can open the data without a coordinate system or a local coordinate system. Uh, while a spherical scene can open a data, a 3D data with a coordinate system uh, inputted on that data. For example, if we have a, like a 3D max uh, data, this one is 3D max data. Uh, and this data has a coordinate system, for example, WGS 1894 or UTM or any other coordinate system, we can open it as a spherical scene. But if 
these data sets doesn't have any coordinate system uh, defined, uh, so we need to open it as a plain scene. Okay, so let's continue with uh, the definitions of a plain scene. Um, so the plain scene uh, is the surface of the earth. Uh, the surface of the earth is spread out into a plane to load and display the features. Uh, planar coordinate system data and also projected coordinate system data are supported. Um, but uh, if we want to open or if we want to display the ocean, atmosphere, graticle, or uh, grid labels, it is not supported in a plain scene. So you can see that the plain scenes only have like a a white color, uh, a white spare, uh, white scenes for the three D planner. Your your voice is very low. Can you close? Okay, wait a minute. Speaker on. No, Miss Fella, I mean, uh, are you using microphone? Can you take it closer because your voice is not, uh, we, we, we are not hearing your voice. How about now? Clearly. Is it okay. Is it louder? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's normal. Okay, okay. All right. Um okay, let's continue. Sorry for the technical issues. So this is the how how the plane sense looks like. There is no ocean, no atmosphere, uh, no uh graphical and also grid levels display in this uh plane scene. So only uh something like this with a 3D data. Uh, это uh, пространство сцена, и uh, здесь мы, можем, мы не можем увидеть uh, океан, атмосферы и градиент uh, стороны, вот восток, запад и так далее. Uh, оно выглядит в таком Okay. All right. So the this is the next one. Uh, this is a spherical scene. Um, so the spherical scene simulates the surface of the Earth with a sphere. Uh, inside of the spherical scenes, um, you can you can display it uh more uh similar like a real world because it's display the oceans and also the the atmosphere and also the grid and graticals uh, inside of this spherical scene. And these spherical scenes can open a data with a coordinate system, uh, with a spherical coordinate systems and others. So you can uh, also locate your data uh, in exact uh, correct locations. Uh, for example, if uh, the data in Kyrgyzstan that uh, and when you open this data, it will be displayed on the uh, on the right locations. In a simple way, it is a spherical bit scene. Now we can see the ocean, the atmosphere, and other spaces. It uses the spherical coordinate system. И его можно открыть и в виде, она показала рисунок в таком виде. Okay, so uh, now we will move to the um, to the hands-on uh, with the first exercise, which is uh, browsing the 3D scenes using SuperMap iDesktop. Uh, for the first exercise, we will use uh, 
uh, the compass, keyboard, uh, or mouse to browse the 3D scenes using our uh, computers. And also we can control the display scene elements uh, for each layer. Uh, we can also browse uh, feature properties uh, and also measure using a measurement tools in the scene. So uh, now, I will open a 3D, uh, sorry, I will open a Supermap IDEX talk. Okay, um, this is Supermap IDEX talk. Um, I think we already uh, see, see this data, uh, see these applications before. And also I've prepared a data uh, for today's training. A sample 3D data. Okay, we can open the data the, the data one. Okay, this is the data that we will open uh, first, which is the 3D scene dot uh, smwu, and this is inside a data one folder. So you can find this data if you have download uh, the sample data before. So I'm gonna open this one. Uh, by using right click on the workspace, untitled workspace, and then click open file workspace. And uh, here we need to find the data inside the data one, uh, inside the 3D scene folder. And you can find 3D scene.smwu. This is the workspace file. And click open. All right. Okay, there are several uh, data sources and also several data sets uh, which already prepared before uh, this data have been prepared before. So we can uh, start to open, I think, uh, CBD here, uh, CBD scenes. Double click to open in spherical scene. So before continuing to the how to browse the 3D scenes, uh, do you want to translate it first or I can continue? Сначала мы должны открыть, она отправила нам файл, и там должны вы найти um all right so uh, we will continue to how uh, we browse the three scenes like using a compass keyboard or a mouse Okay, here in the 3D windows, uh, this is the 3D scene display uh, in the middle. This is a 3D scene windows. So before, uh, if you are opening a 2D maps, uh, it will be a 2D map windows. But if, uh, if you open it as a 3D uh, data or 3D scene, it will be open as this 3D scene windows. And the, also the tools is uh, different with the 2D maps. So first, you have these uh, tools to adjust the look, uh, adjust the view of your uh, data. Okay, can you select? So you can adjust the view uh, angle of your three uh, D scenes using this uh, circle this toggle and also you have the pen uh, pen button or even you can also use your mouse mouse click here you can use a mouse click to display uh, to display and also set the rotate uh, the angle of your uh, of the 3d view okay you can also browse the 3d scene by dragging the uh, by uh, dragging the mouse Bringing the mouse to left and also to the right corner of this 3D scene. 
and uh, here um, how to control the display scene elements it's also similar with the uh, 2d layers or 2d maps there is also a 3d layers display on the layer manager so uh, if you want to control the display you can uh, like hide and unhide the layer itself for example if i want to uh, hide or if i want to uh, not displaying the trees you can click this one so you can see the difference here Okay, this is only a uh, like a shadow of the trees, but if I hide, uh, unhide these three layers, it will be displayed uh, as a 3D symbol, a 3D tree symbol, and it has different symbols for different type of uh, trees. And uh, you can also hide others like building. Here you can see uh, the building is not appear now because we hide it we make it unvisible. Also the ground, you can uh, hide and unhide. And also the waters. So, so Ms. Yeah. Villa, yeah? uh, can, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Can I uh, translate it? Because as a uh, participant does not understand all what you are saying. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Could you wait a while, okay? Yeah, yeah. Она говорит, что я вот аудиторию только что поменяла, слышно, наверное, меня, да? Она говорит, что вот 3D цена у нас открыта, но вот на этой цене у нас сейчас нету э, зданий. И без зданий там указано. Can you go on, Miss Vela? All right, so uh, yeah, okay, that's yeah. how we browse the 3D scenes and also hide and unhide the uh, feature layers inside the 3D scenes. It's similar with the 2D maps, right? And uh, next one, how we browse the feature properties. It's also the same with uh, 2D maps. If you want to display, for example, you want to know uh, this tree's uh, feature properties, you can right click and also uh, layer properties here. Uh, right click on the layers, 3D layers, and display the layer properties. And there will be several settings that you can adjust uh, for this uh, for these layers. For example, uh, like the, it will display shadow mode and also the caption, uh, and also the minimum visible height and maximum visible height and any other settings. Okay. Она говорит, что здесь uh, у нас когда открыта вот сцена, у нас uh, появится несколько слоев, да? чтобы uh, изменить uh, слой, мы должны нажать на, на правую кнопку мыши соответствующего слоя, и у нас откроется дополнительное окно, свойства вот этого слоя. Там мы можем изменить э, тень, э, там мы можем указать э, название э, и так далее. All right. And uh, you can see here, this is, I already saved this uh, 3D scene as a CBD, CBD scene. I also, I already saved it. But if you ha doesn't have this since earlier, so if you want, if you only have this uh, kind of 3D data sets inside of your workspace, you can uh, you can open it in a spherical sense like this. You can uh, block block the data, and then right click and choose add to new spherical scene. So there's a different right. Uh, if this data has a coordinate system uh, with a spherical coordinate system, it can be open as a uh, as a spherical scene and this new plane scene will not uh will not uh it's it's unactive so we cannot click this plane scene because if you see here right click and you choose properties and you choose coordinates there is a coordinate set, uh, system display or define for this data set which is uh, wgs 1894 geocentric uh, so it's long lat uh, coordinate system 
So uh, it means that this data have a coordinate, a spherical coordinate system. So we need to open it as a spherical scene. Okay, here, right click and choose add to new spherical scene. And at the first time, it only showing the this earth display, spherical earth. And you need to zoom to layers. Uh, any any layers you can click, and then you right click and choose zoom to layers. Okay, it will display the same uh, the same the same uh, scenes like before, but we haven't saved it now. Чтобы добавить пространственную вот модель на 3D сферические модели, мы должны вот у нас уже открыто Workspace Manager файл с именем CBT, да? Надо вот эти файлы добавить на сферическую схему вид. Можно все файлы выделить, добавить, можно по одному добавить. Если недоступно, вот добавить в сферическую цену. Тогда мы можем перейти в окно свойств, и там мы можем выбрать соответствующие параметры. И если вот внутри вот этого файла указаны сферические координатные данные, тогда он будет оказываться, отображаться вот на виде сферы. Да? Потом переходим на слой, соответствующий слой. Что вот этот слой отображался на сфере, мы должны выделить этот слой и там вот на сфере можно увидеть эту часть. Окей. Okay. Uh, right. Next, uh, how we uh, change the water uh, effect for this, uh, for this lake? So uh, before this, uh, we saw like an evac, right? An, an evac, a water evac for this lake uh, in the earlier scene that I display. But now the lake or the water is only a 3D polygons. So how we change it into a 3D water evac? You can click these layers, these 3D water layers, and right click, choose layer style, and you can choose the 3D fill symbols here. And there are options whether you want to use rushing water, slow water, calm lake, or still water. So, for example, I'm using this calm lake. Okay. And then click OK. Okay. You can zoom to layer back or you can save it first. Here, do you want to save the changes to uh, ground? Click yes, and this one I will uh, make a name for the scenes. For example, exercise exercise one. Then click OK, and then you can uh, open it back. Yeah. So now the water effect has been applied into this water lake. So uh, that's that's how we change the 3D water polygons with only a color symbols into a 3D water effect, a 3D fill water effect. Чтобы создать 3D эффект для вот этой воды, мы можем перейти на свой вот CBD. И э, нажимаем правую кнопку мыши и выберем свойства. Там можно из э, опции выбрать, допустим, тихая вода или вода с волнами. Э, какая опция нас интересует, его выберем. И вот этот эффект и мы будем применять. После того, как мы применяем, вот эффект можно увидеть на основной цене. Okay, thank you. Okay, next we will move to the slide back. Okay. All right, so that's how we do uh, browsing 3D scenes, right? Um, we haven't uh, we haven't passed this measure in the scene. We can pass it later together with the analysis. Okay, so back to the theory, uh, theory of the 3D layer organizations. So as mentioned before, we have 
uh, three layers in 3D layer organizations, which are screen layers, general layers, and also terrain layers. What is the difference and what kind of data uh, that is categorized as those kind of scenes? For screen layers, uh, we will open only like a static graphics such as logo, description, so the screen layer cannot be moved to another position. And also the next one, we have general layers. General layers including 2D data, for example, point, line, polygon, text, cat, map, and any other 2D data and also 3D data, like 3D point, 3D polygons, models, image, grid, and also catch data. This is uh, for a 3D models, like oblique photogrammetry data. We need to create the cache, this catch data first, and it's included in the general layers. And we have also surface layers and KML layers as a general layers. And the next one, uh, which is the last one, this is the terrain layers. The terrain layers, including uh, data with, an, with a value of elevations. For example, oh yeah, for example, uh. like uh, DM, digital elevation model, green and all grid, and also the terrain such. Okay. Um, Organizация 3D слоя. Uh, там есть у нас три слоя. Первый слой – это слой экрана, второй слой – это общие слои, и третий слой – это слой местности. Uh, в первом слое у нас указываются статистические и графические данные, uh, например, как uh, описание uh, или uh, лого данных. Uh, общий слой. Там указывается… 2D данные, как мы до, до этого работали. Там в виде точек можно указать, в виде линий. Там указываются 3D данные, слой обслуживания и KML слой. И последний слой – это слой местности. Там указывается сетка, там указывается территория местности или физическая особенность места особенности этой местности. Okay, so uh, if you want to take a look at the difference uh, of a screen layer, general layers, and terrain layers, let me open Supermap IDEX top again. So inside the layer manager, you can see here, there are three layers of for the 3D scenes. For example, screen layers. This is screen layers and uh, there is no uh, no child note. It means we uh, didn't open anything as a screen layers. And the next one is general layers. Here uh, we have expand button. So there are several nodes, uh, several layers included as a general layers, which is models and also this one, a three D polygons, and also um, yeah, this one only models and three D polygons. And for the terrain layers, uh, since we don't have any data set of, to display now in the CBD, uh, CBD scene as a terrain, so we don't have terrain layers. But later on the other data, the other data uh, that is displayed in this uh, exercise, I will open also terrain layers later to see the difference yet uh, between uh, general layers and also terrain layers. В первом слое, где у нас layer manager, здесь находятся три слоя, screen layer, general layers и terrain layers. В первом у нас ничего нету, во втором мы уже рассмотрели, где слой общих данных, да? там мы видели слой воды, слой деревьев и третью. Там у нас также пусто, но мы можем туда добавить слои из нашего workspace manager. Okay, let's continue. All right, so uh, now um, we're going to show you how to add a screen layers. 
So uh, screen layers, as mentioned, it can add a watermark, logo, label, and etc. And this is the supported format, which is PNG, JPEG, uh, BMP, and others uh, image format. And it uses screen coordinates. It means that it has no geographic meaning because it uses the 3D scene, 3D screen coordinates, and also is static relative to our 3D window. Uh, for example, here we have an exercise to add the logo of a uh, super map. Okay, let me open IDEX stock back. But first, uh, let's search some logo. Okay, for example, here we have super map logo in PNG format. Open in documents. All right. So here, how to add the uh, 3D uh, uh, screen layer. Here, right click on the screen layers and choose add object. Чтобы добавить на первый слой screen layer какие-то данные, например, мы можем туда добавить водяной знак, мы можем туда добавить лого, какие-то метки и так далее. Мы, например, нашим... Сейчас она показывает пример. Она хочет туда добавить логотип Supermap. Можно изображение вот этого логотипа брать и сюда ставить. Yeah, this uh, this logo is relative to the 3D window, so it will not move any uh, move anywhere if we uh, if we browse the 3D scenes. So you can see here, if you do editing, it will show uh, editing function like move and also uh, make it larger or smaller. But if you don't uh, don't enable this editing function, uh, it will be static. Uh, it will have a static position relative to your 3D windows, which is uh, always in this uh, left uh, left bottom corner. Этот лого будет помешаться в левой части, в левом углу, да? Он имеет статистический, то есть неизменяемый положение мест. Чтобы его редактировать, просто надо нажать на имя этой, этого слоя и выбрать команду «Редактировать». Можно увеличить, можно уменьшить, но когда мы будем работать с другими ценами, оно будет недоступно статистически. Okay. Um, so next is adding general layers uh, here. I think every uh, here, every layers, every data set in your in your workspace, which is a 3D data set, if you open it as a 3D spherical scene or a plane scene, it will be open as general layer, except if this data have a uh, elevations or it is a grid data set. For example, this one is a grid data set. If I open it uh, in a 3D scene, it will be detected as a terrain layers. So you can try. Uh, we can try it. For example, here I have DM data, uh, and I will I will open it as a new spherical scene here. And uh, here add to add as terrain and also add as image. We can click OK, and we can zoom two layers here. So you can see here uh, for the image, for the color display here, uh, color display of the DM itself, it will be detected as a general layers. But for the terrain, for the elevations of this data set, it will be detected as a terrain layers. So if I uh, unhide, okay, unhide this DM image, it will be only showing the terrain itself, right? with the green colors, something like this. You can see the differentiate. This is this has a elevations, okay, like this. So this is the train layers. The train layers, um, 
um, the terrain layer showing the terrain itself or the grid or the value of the pixel grid inside of your grid data set while the image itself will be detected as general layers because it's only an image uh, of your data sets. Uh, слой, вот этот слой местности, мы можем его увидеть на uh, сферическом, вот 3D сферическом виде. Uh, есть у нас, где Workspace Manager, uh, когда мы загружаем сюда какие-то данные, у нас оказывается, появится и uh, слой сетки. Допустим, если первый вот этот слой надо добавить на сферу, просто его надо нажать, выбрать команду «Добавить на слой», и мы можем увидеть его на сферическом 3D-сцене, можно и на плоской, на плоскости тоже можно увидеть. И вот эту плоскость можно увидеть как топографическом виде и вот в таком цветном виде. Okay, thank you. Okay, next. Um, we have another exercise, which is a 3D flying. Um, this 3D flying is actually a tools uh, from uh, Supermap IDEX Um Using this 3D flying, you can uh, browse the 3D scenes uh, and also create a flying route in the 3D scenes, edit it, start to fly. So you can explore your 3D uh, view display on your 3D scenes. And also you can accelerate uh, the, 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 flying, the flying through and also stop and save it. Okay, I think we, I need to show you how to uh, perform these 3D flying tools. Okay, here I'm using this CBD. Let me open it back. CVD uh, scene. Okay, and uh, under the uh, under the ribbon menu, you can find fly manager. And I already prepared a fly route uh, before for this exercise because the time is very limited. So I created uh, I created it uh, earlier. So we can only open it. We can just open it inside of a folder that um upload i have uploaded earlier i think it's yeah it's under data one folder and you can find flyroots.fpf flyroots.fpf and then click open okay the, yeah i think we can translate it first because yeah Следующий инструмент у нас называется инструмент 3D Flying. С помощью этого инструмента мы можем сделать, вот, как здесь указано, Fly Manager, вот такие действия. И у него, она уже, у нее уже готова была эта цена. Оно находится в папке Data01, и с этой папки мы будем просто загружать сюда этот файл. Okay. How we how we perform this uh, 3D flying? So you can see here there is a play button, so you can play. So it will move from stop one, uh, and then from stop one to stop two, stop two to stop three, and uh, to stop four, stop five, and also stop six until until the last stop. Как надо будет выполнить этот flight flying route? Там у нас появится вот где flying stop manager пункты вот стоп один, стоп два, стоп три. Можно по очереди перейти по этим пунктам. Okay, and uh, we can also add more stops. For example, uh, this is the last stops. Let me find the last stop. Okay, this is the last stop. You can double click to find the last stops. Uh, stops eight, this one. And uh, I want to add more stops uh, here, maybe here. I want to, uh, the last stop will be on this loops. So you can click by camera. 
So modifies uh, at click by camera. Where is it? Можно добавить больше пунктов. Допустим, я у меня будет это восьмой пункт. Я его добавлю сюда. Можно на разные места добавить. И можно здесь камеру использовать. Okay, at stop by camera. So here we have stop nine, right? Uh, and then if you want to delete, just delete the the stops using right click click delete and you can also here settings okay wait a minute yeah you can set the like this one you can set the azimuth and also the tilt angle and also the speed the speed settings for example um you want the whole the whole flying route uh, analysis to be only like five second or five second here for example yeah i will delay the stop three until stop eight first and i want uh i want to set from stop one to stop two only takes like uh one for example three seconds so it will if i play it С одной точки на другую точку можно указать вот здесь азимут, это вот, и можно установить здесь время, flying, время просмотра. Okay, can fly it only three seconds. It takes only three seconds from uh, stops one to stop two, and you can also adjust uh, by using the speed. Uh, but you only can set uh, one uh, one settings. For example, if you set the speed, then you cannot set the durations. If you set the duration, then you cannot set the speed because it's uh, related to each other. For example, it's 400 kilometers per hour. And then if you uh, make it like uh, faster, the duration also will be automatically changed uh, based on the speed that you uh, set before like здесь мы можем изменить только один параметр или вы можете изменить скорость или вы можете изменить время если вы будете изменить время ой скорость тогда автоматически время будет изменяться допустим если вы ускорите тогда время автоматически будет изменяться потом можно нажать на вот эту кнопочку play и посмотреть okay. All right, so next one. Okay, uh, we will finish until uh, slide 95, and then we can have a break first uh, for 10 minutes before continuing to the next, uh, the next steps until the last one. Okay, now we have this. Oh, you can translate first. Сейчас мы будем рассматривать слайд до 95, потом будем 10 минут перерыв, и потом продолжим. All right, so uh, inside of Supermap IDEX talk, we also have several 3D spatial analysis function. Uh, for example, here I, uh, I mentioned only four, uh, four spatial analysis. The first one is visible analysis, shadow analysis, skyline analysis, and openness analysis. I think we can perform some of them using our uh, 3D scenes inside of Supermap IDEX talk. So let me open it back, the Supermap I desktop. All right. Okay, I think I will delete the flying through first. Okay, here. All right, so the 3D analysis function is under 3D analysis menu on the, on the ribbons. So you can find the uh, several several special analysis function that you can perform using this data. For example, I will uh, make this visible sorry visibility analysis function. So what is this functions? This function will show you the 
the point that can be view from the viewpoint. So if the if the the line is showing a green a green line, it means that the point that you choose uh, can be view from the viewpoint. But if the line showing the red line, it means that 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 point cannot be seen from your viewpoint. For example, I draw a viewpoint here. I draw a few points uh, in this uh, windows in this fourth floor of the building. And here I want to take a look if this uh, positions, if this uh, point positions can be seen from that uh, fourth floor. So I click this button, I click this point and I click another, another, another point, another points and another points. So you can see the difference. And also, I will add more that cannot be seen from this point, I guess. Where is it? Uh, 3D analysis, у нас есть четыре вида анализа. Первый – это высокого анализа. Как можно увидеть вот этот объект? Второй – shadow analysis. Как можно увидеть тени? Skyline analysis и open analysis. Она сейчас показывает нам первый вид visible анализ. И для этого мы должны перейти вот на вкладку, <coughs> на панели инструментов, на вкладку команд, как можно увидеть. И она вот здесь точку выбрала, и с четвертого этажа, как видно будет вот эта точка здания, она выбрала четвертый этаж. Okay, so you can see here, there's a green line. It means that this point can be seen from this viewpoint, from the fourth floor. But if the the line is a red line, it means that this point cannot be seen from that viewpoint, from the viewpoint that we just drew before. Here is the viewpoint. The viewpoint on, only can see the, the side view until this, uh, this corner. Там вот линии зеленая, да, показывает, что вот эта область у нас видно будет с четвертого этажа. То, что с красной отображено, да, оно не видно будет. Допустим, вот здесь указываются две линии до судова, до края вот этого здания видно будет, от края до конца вот тени не видно будет. Uh, and the next uh, analysis is the fear shed analysis. It's also similar with the with the feasibility analysis, but uh, the difference is only fear shed analysis showing area, while uh, feasibility analysis only showing a line like this. Uh, here I will try to make a tree, uh, make a fear shed analysis function. Okay, here. I draw a few points and then there will be a area here. I click right uh, I left click and here there is a color which is a green color and also a red colors. Okay, this is the few point that I choose this one. So the green colors showing the area that can be seen from that viewpoint, while the red color cannot be seen. It's maybe because it is it is covered by other object, uh, and also it's like behind the uh, other objects or something like that. So this one, in, uh, also you can change the azimuth. Here, if you change the azimuth, it will be it will adjust the viewpoint. Uh, the view display of your analysis and also you can change whether you want to change the visible area color as another colors or invisible area color as another color you can change on this parameter settings and you can also change the horizontal perspective for example i change into 140 what this looks like okay 100 i guess yeah it's different right showing the different result of your analysis by uh, changing the parameter settings. Следующий инструмент у нас называется U-Shed Analysis. С помощью вот этого инструмента мы можем увидеть пространство. 
с точку, откуда мы будем смотреть, надо выбрать, и надо выбрать даль дальность. И вот э, зеленым указывается та область, которая видна будет с этой точки. А красным у нас невидимые области. Или вот эта область находится за каким-то объектом, э, поэтому оно не видно будет. Можно здесь э, по свойств э, вот эти цвета, поменять, допустим, visible, то, что нам видно будет, это пространство можно другим цветом отмечать. Fusion analysis is a start, uh, having a static result, so it cannot be moved. But for the dynamic fusion, uh, we can we can uh, we can simulate uh, the uh, the result itself. For example, I draw a line here, and this is the result of the dynamic fusion. So you can see here, we have the simulation of a man. Yeah, I think the color, okay, here of a man uh, walking on the street and it's showing which area that can be seen from this man uh, viewpoint and which area that cannot be seen from that man viewpoint. And also we can change the role, for example, to plane here, this is the analysis. If we change to plane, we can play it here, the plane and it will show the area that cannot be seen and also the area that can be seen from that uh, plain viewpoint. And also we can change um, to another role, for example, car. So here we have a car and then it's showing which area that can be seen and which area that cannot be seen from that viewpoint. Okay. То, что мы до этого смотрели, viewshed analysis, это статистически, то есть оно не изменяется. Следующий инструмент называется dynamic viewshed. Когда мы его используем, мы можем указать, вот, допустим, линию и выбрать объект. Допустим, если человек будет ходить, то какие области у нас видно будет. Можно сверху тоже самолета посмотреть. Какая область видно будет, тоже можно анализировать здесь. Или с помощью машины. Вот с этой точки, пока доходим до этой точки, какие области у нас видно будут. Uh, you can uh, you can display a daylighting rate here a daylighting rate for a specific time uh, period in the area that you draw so you can click the shadow analysis function and you can draw a polygons here a polygons for example i want to i want to analyze the shine shine rate on this building right click after you finish drawing and then here there will be a sample point display Uh, based on the polygon that you draw. And on the point itself, if you highlight to the point, it will show the positions X, Y, Z, uh, X, Y, Z, and also the daylighting rate. For example, in this area, the daylighting rate is 0%. It means that uh, if there is no sunshine uh, rate on this area, maybe because uh, it covers because the, the sun it's coming from here and then it's covered by another another structure of the building. But if you take a look at this zero colors, the daylighting rate is uh, very high, which is a 62 uh, percent and another yellow color 69 percent and others. And you can also set the sampling distance. For example, now the sampling distance is uh, five. And then for example, I want to change uh, for every two, every two meters, it will show another samples point. It, it's loading now. Okay, here, every two, every two sampling distance per point. Okay. 
yeah it it will be more dense right for the sample point if you change the sampling distance следующий инструмент у нас называется анализ тени вот как солнце будет падать на этот объект вы можете выбрать с помощью вот этого инструмента можно увидеть на каких областях у нас больше будет свет падать и на каких областях меньше будет падать. Если нажать правую кнопку мыши, там можно увидеть данные X, Y, Z. И указывается, насколько сильно падает вот этот свет сюда. И здесь в окне свойств можно также дистанцию между этими точками указать. Если, допустим, указать 20, тогда вот All right. So uh, another analysis only can be applied for a train for a train uh, data. So we need to open a train data first. I think we can open this. Uh, wait, this DM scene. Can double click. Okay, and then uh, we can go to 3D analysis function. For example, we can. Uh, do analysis follows four slope analysis so it uh, it will uh, have a simulations on slope and aspect analysis based on this terrain we can click this function and then we can draw a polygons to proceed the slope analysis here and you can see now there is already a slope analysis function and uh, here we can also have a flow Can you show uh, show the slope uh, and aspect analysis here slope and aspect analysis and you can see there is a but the arrow button the arrow button showing the flow of the slope itself and you can also set the transparency for example higher okay, something like this this is the slope and uh, aspect analysis. Okay, and then uh, we can uh, move to another analysis, which is the ISO line analysis. So it's also similar with a 2D maps uh, slope. Okay, wait a minute. It's also similar with a 2D uh, ISO line, but in the 3D uh, for the analysis function, we only can we only can uh, do the simulation for the ISO line. So here we cannot export the results. So here I draw a polygons, and there will be a ISO line display based on the polygon I uh, boundary that I draw. And here you can also set the interval. For example, we can make it more dense like every 10 meters we can create a, a inter, interpolation contour and then we can also set another one for example 60 it will be like this so this is only a simulations of uh, iso line analysis we cannot export the result and then the last one of the analysis the 3d analysis function this is a flood analysis so we can have a simulations uh, of a flood analysis based on the area that we draw. For example, I want to draw a polygons in this area and I want to simulate the, uh, the flood happening during time based on this location. Okay, you can see here, it's moving. There is uh, like water coming from the lowest point based on the terrain until the highest point based on the terrain. So we can see the area that uh, happening the flood at the, uh, at the last one. So here we have the current altitude display, which is al already, uh, already moving from zero to 2000. And we have the minimum feasible altitude and maximum feasible altitude. For example, the maximum flood happened uh, is uh, is on 2,000 meters. For example, I want to set only until 100, uh, 1,000 meters. 
Now it's like this. It's only showing like this. And the area, uh, the area above 1,000 meters uh, didn't happen a flood. And that's the point of the analysis uh, function in SuperMap IDX scope. Следующий инструмент у нас называется анализ местности. Можно там анализировать, как ветер влияет на этот местность. Сначала мы должны выбрать полигон. И вот на этом полигоне можно увидеть с помощью вот первого инструмента, как влияет на этой местности ветер. Второй – это уровни, можно посмотреть. И последний – это наводнение, можно посмотреть. Надо выбрать здесь старший полигон, и можно увидеть, вот в окне свойств можно там, если, допустим, она установила тысячу метров максимально, да, тогда как вот наводнение будет выглядеть, можно увидеть здесь, анализировать здесь. Okay, so this is the last slide before our break. Um, so uh, our 3D functions is not only can be displayed in SuperMap I desktop, which is a desktop GIS applications, but also it can be displayed in a web browser using a WebGL, iClient for WebGL, uh, for the development of a web applications. And also we can display it at mobile, mobile applications, and using the virtual reality uh, equipment like the glasses, the glasses of VR, uh, and then we can display also the 3D data inside of that equipment. And we can also display in augmented reality here. Augmented reality is an, uh, we, can, we can use AR applications and we can, uh, we can display our 3D models uh, in the real locations of the world using our phone camera. And that's the multi-terminal applications uh, functionality uh, from our 3D, uh, 3D GIS function in SuperMap. У нас здесь также имеются другие приложения, допустим, WebGL приложения для mobile приложения, VR приложения и AR приложения. И можно там визуализировать, допустим, с помощью вот VR. Можно визуализировать и посмотреть а, местность. Okay. okay, thank you for the translations. And I think this is the last slide before our break. All right, so uh, we will continue the training uh, now. We will uh, have a training on how creating a rapid modeling by factor stretching. So here we have the data loading. We have uh, steps one, which is we have a 2D polygon, right? And then we have uh, an extrude, uh, bottom altitude, and also expansions. So here we set the 2D polygon into 3D polygons using the bottom altitude and also the extension height of the building. And then we can change the texture of the building using a uh, image. And here we, I will show you how to make this uh, this uh, workflow using SuperMap IDEX top. Okay. We will open a new workspace. So I will close this one first by uh, right click on the three D scene and choose close workspace. Okay, so we will open another another data, which is on data two. We can open rapid modeling here uh, by right click on untitled workspace and then choose open open file workspace. And here before we use a uh, data one folder and now we use uh, data two folders, which is a rapid modeling. And then we choose this SMWU rapid modelings. This is a project file and click OK. And there are several uh, data sources and also data set and also scene that we will open using this data. Okay, for example, I have this 2D building, right? I have this 2D building and I have another, uh, another data set. But if I open it as a 3D, it can be something like this. So if I open it as 2D, it will be like this. Oh, sorry, it's not open. Let me open by myself, adding new maps. 
it will it will be like this if we open it as a 2d but if we open it as a 3d it can be this uh, 3d scenes so actually we render uh, one by one the features one by one um, to make it as 3d for example we have here we have trees right 2d point uh, as trees and we can add it we can add this 3d uh, uh, we can add these three data sets into spherical scene into the current scenes that we open and then we can double click to see the locations of the trees is not uh, appear right because we didn't change into a symbols so if we only change, uh, if we only display it as 2d as a point it will be not displayed as a scene so we need to change the symbol by using right click and choose layer styles and then we can choose 3d marker for example i'm gonna use this uh, tree, uh trees and then we can change the scale for example eight click, well, click okay oh let me open it back Here, can change the layer styles into this, for example. Yeah, something like this. We can change the 2D point into a 3D symbols uh, using, uh, using these layer styles. So based on these uh, steps, we can also uh, make it for another uh, features for example we have building here for example building let me open building data sets we can uh, choose extensions for the building can choose absolute here the building is appear now and data from is crown and we have lift height here i think we have stretch height oh sorry not altitude we have stretch height it's zero. Is there, wait, let me check the attributes. Okay, this trees already appear now, right? Um, here you can change the three D symbols of trees, and also you can extrude the building. Here you can see a uh, building can can hide and unhide the layers to show which one that we want to uh, edit. Okay, for example, I want to edit the building first. Building here. And this building is actually only a 2D data sets, but we uh, extrude this building uh, based on the stretch height. And also we, uh, we change the textures here on the texture settings. So you can here, building one, I guess. Building one, add to new spherical scene, zoom to layers. And then we can uh, style settings. Uh, we can use other data. I think the data is crashed. So we will change the data first using the first data. OK. 
Okay, we can move to another another analysis first before we uh, we going back to that uh, data. So here I'm gonna use this data here. We have a building information modeling uh, models. This is a 3D models, which use a specific plugin to export the BIM models into a vile data source. And uh, we can uh, open the data set, which stores the BIM models in iDesktop. I already prepared it earlier. And we can optimize the BIM models in iDesktop. We can uh, find a features. For example, I want to find a window in eighth floor. We can query the, the features based on these BIM models. And uh, how to open these BIM models? Uh, I already put it in under uh, 3D scenes uh, workspace. So before we access 3D CBD data, right, right? But now we access the BIM data. And to open it, we can lock the data and then choose add to new spherical scene like before. And then we can zoom to layers. Uh, I think we can translate it first. Please. The в котором хранятся модели BIM. Активизировать okay. модели BIM на рабочем столе, добавить модели BIM в 3D. Вот такие возможности есть для проектирования. Okay, so for this uh, for this uh, building, we can click on the we can click on the models and uh, for example, I click on these windows and it will show properties of the windows. Um, sorry, this is still in Chinese because the data set is uh, from our headquarters. and it can show the information attributes uh, of these uh, windows. And we can also move to the indoors of the building go into indoor of the building to see the, the doors or uh, and other floor, something like that. And we can also do query based on the BIM models data set that we have. For example, here, I want to query a uh, building, uh, sorry, I want to query the windows uh, in eighth floor. So uh, it's the same with the SQL query in 2D. You can choose SQL query here. Okay. Uh, select, you can select the windows, uh, windows, window, window, where, yeah, this is a windows. And you can choose, select all. And where is the conditions? Where, uh, okay, I think this one. Yeah, this is the floor. Uh, it's in English, it's floor. And also we can uh, query the windows, uh, which is on eighth floor, for example, something like this. And we show the results, browse the attribute tabs, highlight in scene, and also save the results. We can query. Okay, now uh, the result is appearing. We have uh, attributes uh, of the windows in eighth floor. And also if you take a look on the models we highlight it we highlighted the windows in eighth floor with the blue colors and also we have the result query result we can open it in another scene at the new spherical scene here you can uh, choose uh, zoom to layers yeah here here's the result it only it only queries a window in uh, windows inside of eighth floor. So that's the uh, that's the analysis for the BIM data set. We can query and we can also display. We can click the each features inside of these three BIM models to see the attributes information of these BIM models. All 
right thing i can continue right okay okay uh, another another data which is in 3d data besides of the 3d beams uh so before at the first one we have a 3d max models and then the next one we have a dm models uh, dm terrain and also a uh, next one we have beam models and uh, i want to show you the next one is uh, oblique photogrammetry data so here i've already created a configuration file for oblique photography data because the data is really big i think it's around like 10 gb uh, for the raw data maybe it's bigger so i create a uh, I create a configuration file based on the raw data to be open in Supermap i desktop. So this data set will be open. .stp uh, in Supermap i desktop will be open as a factor tile layers. So here we can open a new spherical scene here. Right click on the scenes and choose new spherical scene. All right. And here there is a screen layer, general layers, and terrain layers. To open the oblique photography data, you can choose general layers and choose add tiles, catch layers. And you can find the data. Okay, it's on, it's the, in the bottom. You can click open. And then you can choose zoom to layers. This data is a very, uh, very, very have uh, is this data have a very good resolution because it's very specific and also it's very detailed. It's a 3D data. You can see uh, if you uh, take a look at this eagle view, it's like an auto photo data. But if you adjust the view based on the your mouse or your or this to, uh, or this toggle view, you can adjust this view and display the 3D. If, uh, the 3D uh, the 3D display on this oblique photography data. So this is oblique photography data uh, captured by uh, by uh, surveying equipment like uh, like UAV or something like that, and then it's processed using the software photogrammetry, and then the results of the processing can be imported to Supermap IDEX top to be displayed as a 3D scene and to be integrated with any other any other data itself. So this is the oblique photography data. You can see there is very smooth and you can also uh, find uh, and also do the analysis based on this data. Uh, the same analysis that can uh, can be uh, can be performed using this data set. This is oblique photogrammetry data. And so here, I think I also have an oblique, another oblique photography data, which already saved as a uh, scene is, is OSGB data. Okay, so this is oblique photogrammetry data. So for oblique photographic models, uh, you can uh, you can find a data with a .osgb file. This is oblique photographic data, and then you can create a generate OSGB config file. So here you can uh, for the three D data, you can for oblique photography, you can create or generate configuration file. But this maybe takes a long time uh, uh, for the raw data to be processed as OSGB config file based on the data size, the, the data size of this uh, raw data. So I didn't perform this, but uh, if you want to perform this function, it's very simple. You can just uh, find the source path and also uh, specify the root node and just click OK and uh, set the target file. And it will be generate and it will generate uh, a .stp file like before. And this is the uh, OSGB data. And the last one. Okay, I think the last one I will show you uh, how to create a particle effect. Okay, let me open the slides first. Okay, in Supermap iDesktop, uh, we can have a particle effect. 
like fire, fireworks, rain, smoke, fountain, and snow within our 3D scenes uh, using a CAD data set. So this is an exercise, uh, how to create the particle effect. First, we need to open the CBD scene and locate to the water area. So here, we can open CBD scene again and we can locate to this water area, right? And then create a new cap data set, name particle, and confirm its coordinate system is consistent with others. So we can create a new uh, data set inside of uh, CBD. We can right click and choose new data set. And here we choose CAD, sorry, we choose CAD and click create. And we make sure that the, probe, uh, the coordinate system is similar with the scene. So we can choose uh, from data set ground. And after that, we can add this one to the current scene. All right, and do editing. For example, uh, I want to create a fountain here. Click fountain and this fountain you can see here, right? We create several fountain in the water lake. This is the particle evac like this. And then we can also adjust the fountain. Okay, we can click on the fountain. And click, uh, we can make it again for the, for the fountain. And you can see here, there is a uh, several setting that can be uh, adjusted. Like uh, positions, data from fountain emitter, like offset angle, you can adjust this offset angle to another uh, angle. And also the start colors and the end colors can be adjusted. And for any other uh, particle objects, also you can uh, you can you can make the same data set. For example, you will create a fire in the building, like fire and smoke here. <coughs> okay, it can be like this, fire. And you can also, wait a minute. You can also create a fireworks, for example, here, there is a fireworks and you can also uh, change the positions of the fireworks by uh, dragging the object into another positions. So uh, that's how to uh, create a particle evac. Uh, you create a new cat data set and add the particle data set into the CBD scenes like I am uh, showed you before. And we choose the object, the particle effect that we want to throw under uh, the particle object collections here, particle object collections. And we can click at the scene to add one or more particle objects. And we can select an object and doing the right click to uh, show the properties. So if you want to change this, uh, this firework properties, you can right click and then choose properties. And then you can do uh, do settings for the particle object itself. All right. So there's another particle objects. This is uh, um, this one, I guess. Oh, that's the particle, another particle effect. And then this is the particle effect setting that you can uh, you can adjust it like the width, the positions, and also the random force, like uh, the rotations and emission rate. You can change based on uh, what you need. And for the sunshine effect, here you can open the CBD workspace, and you can open the building only building you can open in the new spherical scene. Zoom to layers. Okay, here we follow the steps. We can turn on the sun evac by 
uh, clicking, right click on the building layer and enable shadow. Right click on the building layer and enable shadow. Show shadow at all objects, right? So there is a shadow now. And you can also, uh, here we can do a trajectory time. So you can see the shadow will be changed over time. So you can see at eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, and any other time based on this trajectory time. So you can see the difference of the sunshine or of the shadow uh, built of the building uh, based on the time duration, uh, based on the time, a uh, specific time. Okay, that's the sunshine effect. Okay, I think uh, we already performed the 3D analysis before. So um, I also, uh, also the time is uh, over until now. So here we have several uh, several ex exercises or um, like yeah exercises that you can try by yourself. But before before trying the exercises, please download please download the three D data first because all of the exercises using the data that I prepare uh, in the Google Drive, uh, for example, you can try the whole exercises. Okay, uh, start from the page 82. Okay, you can try this one, adding screen layer, adding general layers, adding terrain layers, doing the 3D flying. This is also exercise and open the beam data here. Sorry, not this one. Beam data, open the oblique photogrammetry data and uh, doing the sunshine effect and particle effect and making a particle effect. So uh, um, that's the that's the training for today. Um, 